good afternoon everyone just to give a little bit background on myself uh, my name is shashi kumar uh, around 17 years in technology industry with wipro technologies spent 13 years of my life in us came back to india in 2010 and uh, trying to work with farmers and trying to prove farming as a vocation of choice and the idea that farming is viable we operate in the state of karnataka Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Tamil Nadu right now, um, working with around 850 farmers, okay, from past 13 years. First of all, let's understand what is that happening to our farmer. Last 40 years, we have lost two-third of arable land. We have made entire land in the world, two-third of it, not fit for agriculture. In 60 years, if we don't make drastic steps, we're going to lose remaining of it. That's it. We have got a 60 years of life, and we need to make sure farming through soil actually remains as it is. We are the youngest nation in the world. Our age of Indian farmer is 50 no youngsters are coming into farming. This is a typical situation, okay, if you go to any village, this exactly is an age group of farmers. 50 and above, no youngsters coming in, okay, into farming. Today we work, okay, with around, in around 900 villages. In 450 villages, there is no population below 40 years of age. So that is the status of, okay, Indian farming. And these are the people, actually they are growing food for us. Maybe they look okay, very, uh, okay, very small okay, compared to my body size and his body size. But they are the people, actually they are growing food for us. We need to be extremely grateful for this aged population. But the challenge is, how do you get the youngsters into farming? My own experience, okay, when we started working with farmers, we did a baseline survey of what is happening, okay, in our area of operations, Tumko district. So when we surveyed, we found per annum yield of coconut, coconuts per tree, okay, is around 55. But if you just go back 100, 120 years of back, 100, 120 years, the same coconut tree was yielding 185 nuts to 200 nuts. What happened in 100 to 200 years time frame? What happened? We have systematically killed our soil. We, we economized everything, but we never looked into soil. So that is the status of our soil as of now. You can ask me, I'm an engineer, why not a farmer? So it is not okay that by design, by birth, I had all the okay know-how of becoming an engineer, it is never. I was born in a farming family. What did my father do? Day one, when I was born, my father kept on selling, agriculture is not for you. We have seen enough of agriculture, study well, get out of farming. Score 100 out of 100 in physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, become an engineer. Why did he say that? Day one, it is, it is practical. Because he had a very good role model engineer in front of him in the city of Bangalore. He wanted his sons and children to be engineers. And this is not the story of myself, this is the story of India. Nobody in villages right now would stay back after studying because farming is not viable. So, the, what is this idea? Okay. It's the idea that can we make farming viable, especially smallholder farmers who hold less than five acres of land? Is it possible to make it viable? Is it possible they can lead a livelihood equivalent to a professional in okay, any other towns and cities? be it a doctor, engineer, or a chartered accountant. That was the idea we started working around 13 years back. The idea was to encourage young people, okay, getting back to farming. The question is, how do we do that? What are the challenges? This is a typical scene in any village, standing in front of a collection center, milk pooling centers. Biggest problem farmer faces is cash flows. You should have a cash flow equivalent to any professional. That's the first problem we wanted to solve. Second problem is 
we wanted to take care of soil and water. These are the two fundamental aspects. Enabling cash flows with better management of soil and water makes farming sustainable. That's the idea we started working 13 years back. And harvesting water, okay, rainwater is so critical in the farming ecosystem that we generally okay, undermine. We generally dig bore wells, lift the water out, but actually we need to learn to harvest rainwater. If we don't do that, actually, okay, there's no okay, future to the farming. How did we go about doing it? So first we thought we can solve the cash flow problem by start working with smallholder farmers in a dairy system. Dairy, okay, in India, it's not profitable. Farmer does it because it's our livelihood choice. We wanted to change that one and make him substantially earn through dairy. We changed the way the dairying is done. For example, left side you see the housing, right side we change the housing. Left side you see the way, dirty way the dairies are managed in India. We change that one to a open house systems. If I can't drink water, cow should not drink that water. Generally we feed, very dirt, feed dirty water to cows and uh, we expect to produce great quality milk, it will never happen. And we should change the feeding systems to our cows. Right now all our cows are underfed and mostly fed on concentrated feeds and agricultural waste. We will never be profitable dairy. Farmers actually suffer today because there is no focus on making okay, his dairy enterprise profitable. We started working on cow's body score. Cow's body score is if you scaled on a 1 to 5, so left side actually would scale around body score of 2, the right side is around 3.5, ideal, ideal cows. So we started working on how to teach farmers, okay, rise young calves. If you see the left side calves, okay, they will never ever become great adults. And the right side calves, you could see, they started, okay, looking at calf rearing as a means to raise better adults so that they can have a profitable dairy. We removed hand milking systems. We ensured that quality of milk went up. We changed the milking practices, okay, very dirty practices in India, okay, to fully automated, okay, uh, uh, comparable to any Western systems. We started chilling milk at the farm level. This is a full-fledged dairy, okay, you could see the first slide to this slide, you could see a lot of changes we are bought in. And we started working on the feed and fodder, very, very focused. That's my photo around probably, okay, 13 years back, okay, where we started working with Azola systems, with farmers. We automated the farms completely. Any farm with a 25 cows, now it is fully automated. We taught farmers how to test their milk and tell, hey, you know, this is the quality of milk you pay for. Nobody should certify farmer's milk you should certify his own milk. That's the systems we bought in. We bought in all the Akshay Kalpa farms today, they are driven by methane gas, cooking happens through methane gas. Started working on trenching and bunding, so extreme work on how to trench and bund a farm, integrate, okay, the, increase the biodiversity. We started, okay, integrating banana as an additional crop. So this is some of our farms where we have integrated banana. We started integrating uh, tender coconut, okay, started giving market access to that. So we integrated backyard poultry. The biggest problem, okay, in a cow dung was lack of nitrogen. So we realized if you don't have nitrogen, farmers will continue to buy urea from outside. We started backyard poultry, started giving access to market on eggs. This is what, okay, has happened, okay, past 13 years. We integrated honeybees, okay, very important aspect, okay, is we have actually killed the honeybees in our ecosystem. What you see here is integrating an honeybee, right side you see a chart. When you integrate an honeybee, the pollination, okay, aspects, okay, in a farm really, really goes up. That is a measure of coconut yield post honeybee introduction, almost doubling of the yield. So that is very, very critical. We need to understand importance of honeybee in farming and also additional Okay, income streams to the farmer. To do support all these things, we started okay, talking to young consumers. Hey, you know what, this is what we are doing. Why don't you come and stay with the farmer? Become a farmer for a day or two. In previous year, in uh, year 2022, we got 10,000 consumers visit these farmers. This movement we have created, we created a small housing okay, for these uh, consumers to come and stay experience what is happening in the farms. 
and there are our consumers, it's the free of cost, given access to, okay, understand what's happening. This is where the changes, you can see some of the statistics. Okay, uh, we started measuring data from around uh, financial year 2014, we started working in 2010. We started with, okay, around, okay, 8,000 to 9,000 rupees, okay, income per month for farmer. farmer. Now we have taken it to around approximately 100,000 rupees. So this is a change we have made. It's a focused group of 950 farmers. We have worked in 13 years. We are able to take their income levels to that level on a monthly basis, equivalent to any software engineer, a doctor, or a chartered accountant. You can see, okay, this is uh, some of the data. Ernst and Young audited uh, our farms, okay, in 2022. This is the data they have put in together. What, okay, what, this, what Ernst and Young data says is, there's a nine-fold increase in dairy income post joining Akshakalpa, our program, and there's a two-fold increase in non-dairy income through integration of banana, backyard poultry, okay, and other means, honeybee. So this is a third-party vetted okay, data from Ernst and Young. And what we have done in 13 years, some of the data will be is startling. Maybe you'll be shocked to know. In India, a crossbreed animal produces 1,500 liters of milk or kgs of milk approximately in its lactation is 305 days. Same thing, Israel has reached, okay, around 12,000 liters. Okay, US does around 10,000 liters. Okay, UK does around 8,000 liters. See, where do we, there is a gap. The way we look at, okay, dairy as an agriculture, there's a gap in productivity that we have started working. In Akshakalpa farms, we are doing around 3,300 liters okay, of milk in a lactation. That's an amazing jump, almost, okay, 100% jump over what we are doing in a national average in India. Some of the statistics, for example, one of the most important startling aspect for me is 2011 when we started, any farmer who used to borrow, okay, money from banks, 50% used to go NPA, default. We have bought it down to around 0.5%. That's an amazing, we have 100% automated entire milking. So the milk quality has gone up. Our MBRT count, it's a technical name, methylene blue reductase test, which indicates what is the quality of a raw milk. It is 5.5 hours. This is the best in India possible. So the average, okay, MBRT of a milk in India is around 100 to 180 minutes. Okay, we have taken it to 5.5 hours. And one thing, okay, we need to really see on the collateral benefits. In the beginning of the slide I mentioned, when we audited our farms, we were doing around 55 nuts per tree per annum. In, by 2019, we have taken this entire productivity of coconut trees to around 81 nuts per tree per annum. 13 years of work has taken, okay, make, okay, coconut yields from 55 nuts to 81. In my opinion, if we continue to do this one for next 100 years, probably we will reach what we used to do, okay, 100 years back. So that is the status. And right now, Akshay Kalpa, okay, um, the most ethically farmed ecosystem of around uh, 950 farmers in spread across six districts in two, uh, two states. And uh, this is where our farms are spread. Okay, one, one part of, okay, the farms, okay, in and around Bangalore. Another set of farms are in and around Chennai. So this is the farm spread. You can see these are the impacts. These are these are live locations, not able to show the locations. But so this is how we have done. Okay, last uh, 13 years of work. Thank you very much. Okay, hope you like this. Thank you.